is PubCon 2010. We are here with Chris Brogan. We managed to squeeze him, take a few minutes out of his time. Thank you so much, Chris. We met a couple of years back. Right. Thank you for taking our time. And a quick introduction, although Chris doesn't need introduction. He's a top 100 blogger in Technorati, top five in ad, ad age, right? Ad age, sure. ad age. And he is probably one of the hottest personality when it comes to social media. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what small businesses can do or what are the hottest trend when it comes to small business uh, for social media. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. So where people are looking at using social media tools, what they're wondering is, do I have to be on Facebook? Should I have this Twitter account? Someone told me I need to blog. They told me make YouTube videos. Which one do I do? Where should I go? To me, the, the starting tool is listening. There's, there's listening tools that allow you to search and understand what people are talking about and they'll provide opportunities for you. So, I mean, if you say you don't have time, I'm saying, do you not have time to prospect for new people to put in your uh, hotels? Do you have no time to find other opportunities to, to book events at your, your locations? Uh, if you Google the phrase, grow bigger ears, there's a post that will come up that talks about how to build a free or inexpensive listening tools. Um, from that, you can start hearing what people are talking about. You can start hearing when they say, well, for example, Roger Smith Hotel in New York. It's a very small boutique level hotel, very few beds. Uh, I tweeted on Twitter, where, does, where do people stay in New York these days? And someone right away said, you should stay at the Roger Smith Hotel. Someone right after them said, you should stay at the Roger Smith Hotel. The third person was the Roger Smith Hotel, and they said, come stay with us. We have a blogger special. And I thought, well, well they have a blogger special. I should go there. I had no idea that if I loved ice water, they would have had an ice water special, but they got me. So wow. And I stayed, and, and so I built a relationship, and that's my exclusive place I stay in New York. And, you know, same in Boston, the Colonnade Hotel, another small property. They got me because they talked to me via the social web, and they did it by listening first, and they did it not by giving some promotion, but just connecting and talking about things not even related to their hotel. So if I understand correctly, the very first thing you are saying is listen to your audience and find out what are they talking and which tools they are using, which media they are using to communicate to you. Sure, and you can find it. There's there's software like, for example, if you have everybody's email address, and I'm assuming you get it at the at, you know through your registration process, you can put that into a tool like Rapleaf, R A P L E A F, which allows you to find where on the social network those email addresses have been used to make accounts. So you can find really quickly if you have a list of 10,000 names. If 7,000 of them are in LinkedIn then maybe you should have a group inside LinkedIn, or maybe you should find some way to connect there. If 3,000 of them are inside Facebook, well, then maybe you should put up a Facebook page. And it, one of the things to know, and it was talked about here at PubCon, was they're talking about you or around you, whether or not you are. So you really have to first get in and uh, observe that for yourself. And then secondly, you can take advantage of that and start building relationships. So that's number one. What, what are the other few things you would say? Once you know about your audience, then what are the other things you need? Sure. Well, so, I mean, there's tools like video. Video allows you the opportunity to show something instead of tell it. So mm -hmm. maybe from those two small pictures that they're seeing on your website on how to, what beds to you know, look like in your rooms, maybe you can shoot film to show them a walkthrough of what the downstairs lounge is or your favorite part of the hotel or whatever you want to show. When you can show things in a couple of small video walkthroughs, when you can talk to an interview maybe the manager or maybe the housekeeping staff or whoever you think is going to show the passion of the facility, then people get into it. So number two is you know, make some media in a way that's different than just a typical ad because then you can connect with people. And it doesn't have to be amazing. I mean, you can use a $100. I mean, your camera phone is probably just as good as long as you hold it steady and have decent lighting. You can shoot something that will give people a better idea of what they're going to get into, and then suddenly there's an opportunity there. So that would be two. Uh, three is leave email marketing uh, you know, as, as an important thing, uh, do, but don't do it the way you maybe are doing it. Don't make it look like a big website shooting through the inbox. Don't make it all ads. Don't make it all a bunch of coupon offers. Try to connect. Try to talk to people about why this is the right time of year to come back and visit or what kinds of cool things are coming up in the community. And oh, by the way, we've got your, your room waiting for you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to sort of talk around the sale and still make the opportunity for the sale to happen. And also be brief. The most successful email marketers right now, the Whoop.coms, the Daily Candy, the Groupon uh, people, what they're doing is they're keeping brief, single offer emails coming through, and they're not pummeling their list until they get a response. They're gently uh, 
keeping people opted in and feeling happy about themselves. Wonderful, wonderful. So I guess I'll ask you one more last question. One of my biggest challenge, especially in lodging industries, what is my ROI? How much I'm converting? If I have a Facebook page, what should I go about it? And it, my response is always, you don't think about ROI. You are thinking about creating a community, creating your connection, and long term, social media is really a refined form of SEO. Long run, you are going to get ROI because people know you and they want to do business with you. But what would you say as a ROI for small business? Because time is a huge factor, and where should they interact? Sure. So, I mean, first off, the eye is almost always in time because the investment for a Facebook page is zero. The investment, unless you pay a consultant, the investment in uh, tweeting or all these things are zero except for time unless you pay a consultant. So, the return comes in time and what you're looking for is it's the same as the phone. If you were doing telephone marketing before, this is a new kind of marketing. The difference is it works all night long. You know, you're not there on the phone all day long. You, if you try to make 100 calls throughout your day, if that's a lot of calls to you, I can make 10 million calls be by having something show up in Facebook. So it's, it's long term and it, it's, you're, you're sort of seeding the waters and trying to build relationships that you'll have uh, reference. People need to keep you top of mind, but think about it. We, if we travel, I travel more than most people. I, you know, last year, I mean this year, let's say, maybe 70 or so trips. That's, I'm abnormal. Most people maybe it's four to eight times a whole year. and so. How often do I need your info? Am I always going to be coming to your town, et cetera? So you need to find longer haul uh, referral type opportunities, and that's where the investment comes in. So I mean, I guess it's, you know, if you spend a couple hours on this every day or if you spend it on an, uh, two hours every other day or something, you're going to see some return. Then you have to start asking yourself, well, how much more value could I have if I add a little more time? If I start doing this daily, will I get some more value? And you're going to have to measure for yourself. You're going to have to see what's working, what doesn't. Sticking ads all over the place doesn't work. Uh, y your telephone book ads aren't really working as well as they used to. Your banner ads aren't working as well as they used to. Uh, working with a, uh, consortiums can help. And then it becomes the opportunities of, you know, where do you put your, where's your leverage? So I think there's a lot of opportunities there. What you ultimately need to do is you have to have the, the belief and the willingness that what you know how to do face-to-face -face translates really well on the web. And so that's how it's going to bring it home. And what I'm seeing is there are a lot of impact of social media on organic and local search results too, with Facebook like it and you know, Foursquare and all of that is coming up in your organic. So this is something you just can't avoid anymore because right. so you think that is a huge impact of hyper local and all those. I do very much. My, uh, my company, New Marketing Labs, is just launching Red Pin Marketing, which is all about local because we saw an opportunity there to help businesses, mostly smaller businesses. My clients are normally very big companies, the, the PepsiCo's and General Motors of the world, but I wanted to work with small companies because it just seemed like there was so much opportunity to help them with the local and the organic, so we're working on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank really appreciate time. it. Thank you.